I am a psychopath in Baldur's Gate 3. I am a murderer in Baldur's Gate 3. I am a monster. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special episode of Baldur's Gate 3. I recently did a recap episode for my Skyrim playthrough, and it did way better than I was ever expecting it to do. So I thought I'd try another, albeit shorter, video recapping the first 25 episodes of Baldur's Gate 3 instead of the big 50. There's still quite a bit of material to go over, so let's jump right in. We start with all the opening cutscenes, cutscenes that are so high quality and badass, but also extremely uncomfortable. I just hate eye stuff. Gives me dead space flashbacks. After that, we move on to character creation. Meet Xanros, our Dark Urge Oathbreaker Paladin Warlock. He seems nice, but is evil as hell. Then we get to customize the girl of our dreams. Meet Dommy Mommy, the ultimate goth GF. We watch another cutscene and finally get to play. Now, the tutorial had been changed a lot since early access. It used to be a little longer, but I'm glad that they trimmed it down. It's definitely a better experience overall. I fail my first roll of the playthrough, which sure is a good omen. <laughs> Continuing on, I give this guy's brain a good yoink and poke. It grows some legs and joins the party. Not long after that, we get ambushed by another party member. We have our first combat of the game against these little baby demon things. Easily take care of them and swap armors with Lizelle because hers is way better than mine. Head to the next room where we start pushing buttons at random, accidentally provoking another fight. Seeing Shadowheart beat on her pod door, I search for a rune to get her out. Once free, she joins the party and we all head to the helm. Now, in the helm, there's this big devil guy that drops this rad ass sword if you can kill him, but I decide not to go for it because it would take a while. We get to the nerves and a cutscene plays of us crashing the ship. My character model bugs out and starts A-posing, which made it a pretty funny scene. We end the episode waking up on the beach. Episode 2 starts with trying to steal some good goods from Shadowheart, but she wakes up too soon. She joins the party again and we level up to level 2. We fight a couple of brains and meet our next party member, Astarian. He attacks me, but then I throw him off with my big strength. We kiss and make up and he joins the party. We find a Mind Flayer about to die, and I help it out. Speaking of helping out people, we find Gale. More specifically, Gale's hand. Yet another thing to yoink, and now we have a full party. We go further into the map and find Lizel captured. These dudes just be shit-talking her, and I would have joined in, but this was the earliest point in the game I could break my oath. I convince the Tieflings to shoot the cage so we can kill her together. Then I turn around and attack the Tieflings. After the combat concludes, this bad motherfucker shows up, saying he'll be waiting for me at camp tonight. I go back to camp to talk to him for the rest of the episode, and he officially makes me an Oathbreaker. Episode 3 has us confronting some people who are looting the ruins here. I talk to them to start the combat and have Astarian tucked away to shoot the rope holding up the big stone. The fight goes pretty perfectly, and we lie to the guy at the door to let us in. This small fight was pretty easy because we could just bully the man, but the next fight was a lot more fun. Taking out all but one guy on the first turn of combat feels so good. I take some time to loot my surroundings, doing some inventory management along the way. My next fight happens when I try to unlock the secret door with a button I found. Luckily, I was so thorough in my looting that the skeletons that popped up didn't actually have weapons. The fight was pretty easy when the only real threat there were the magic users. Go back to the door and find an ornate sarcophagus. I open it to find our good friend Withers, who is basically just the NPC that you can respec at. Withers joins us back at camp and we end the episode. We start episode 4 by disarming this other sarcophagus and taking a nice spear. I go back to camp and do an ass ton of inventory management. Moving along, we head further north and run into some funny little goblins attacking some stupid looking people. I don't get a choice of who we side with for now, so we have to attack the goblins. We kick some serious ass, then we level up and end the episode. Starting the episode with a little look at how the game looks with controller. A little more immersive while walking around, but that immersion immediately breaks after opening the radio menu to do literally anything. 
Regardless, we head into the Emerald Grove. First thing we see is this conversation between two fellas who I intimidate into not hitting each other. Talk to the tiefling and he tells us about the druids who are kicking them out in order to have some ritual or something. We explore a little and happen upon this assassination attempt. After thwarting the attempt on her life, she just doesn't fucking care. She was very rude about it and so I took her coin. Fuck her. Moving along, I found a squirrel who I thought was very cute. We run into a group of tieflings who are talking about dipping out early before they get attacked. I tell them, hell yeah, get the fuck out, and off they go. Three less people to fight for when we eventually raid this place. Next, we talk to our new party member, Will. I have some other insignificant conversations and watch a captured goblin just get shit on. Then I see this kid run off with this dude chasing him. Turns out the kid stole an amulet from him and he gives the kid a right smack. Then a guard comes over and gives him a right smack. Overall, a pretty pleasant interaction. Zenros got to see some violence, so he was happy. We talked to a few more people, including Auntie Ethel, but we'll see more of her later. We run into a child who tries to scam us, so I take his ring. While talking to him, his little friend pickpockets me, but I only find out after the fact. The other kid runs into a hole in the wall that I can't follow, so I end the episode there. I gather with all the other people having a PTA meeting or something until this dude plays the fuck off I'm a bear card. Apparently some kid tried to steal an important relic from the druids and they needed that for this ritual. They let us through because Koga wants to talk with us, but before that we speak to this flamboyant gentleman, Volo. He asks about the goblin attack and he makes us sound like such a bitch. So not off to a great start, but we'll be seeing more of him later. I just so happened to loot this bucket of fish next to him, which can be used to get this bear off the elevator, opening up a little shortcut. I head into the inner chamber where Koga is threatening to kill the child. Of course, I do not intervene. In fact, I give her a little encouragement. Oh, flick my eyes towards the exit, see if the child will run. No. Oh, no. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Tila, to me. <laughs> Shit. Yikes. Anyway, she asked me to get rid of the outsiders, and boy, do I have a plan for that. We head to the nurse's office and tell her about our tadpole. She tries to kill us, but I suss it out and convince her I'm not a threat. She gives us some potent poison to drink if we ever start to turn. She tells me to find Helsin to help me further. I decide to explore the grove a little more before heading out. I find this cute little tiefling playing her loot, and I get the funniest option. Dexterity, snatch the loot out of her hands and smash it. <laughs> Fucking do it, let's go dude. Oh, this poor girl. Oh, no, what have I done? <laughs> what did you do? My teacher gave me that and she's... She's dead! You bastard! She's obviously pissed off about it, but I end the episode. Starting episode 7, we hear some singing in the distance. Upon further investigation, we find a child being lured out by some harpies. Everything that could go wrong in this fight, did. Gale couldn't get a save to save his life, the child also died, Astarian kept getting the shit kicked out of him, and there were so many missed attacks. It was just super rough. As soon as the fight was over, a ghost of Gale tells me we need to revive him ASAP. He gives me the most bullshit set of instructions, and I fucking nail the shit out of it. Not a single wrong choice, and I'm super fucking proud of myself for it. We head back to camp to lick our wounds and have a nice talk with everyone. We continue exploring the next day and get ambushed by Raphael. He teleports us to his mansion and transforms into his true form. He offers to help with my tadpole, but I decline. He seems kind of mad about it. But then he fucks off and I end the episode. 
Episode 8, we go to the crack in the wall behind the child and are finally able to get inside. Turns out to be the hideout for the child thieves of the grove. I talk to the leader and send a little donation their way to invest in the guild. I accidentally clicked on Shadowheart and she wants to talk for a bit. Exploring some more, I talk to the head tiefling and talk to him about a little assassination attempt on the druids. I try to steal stuff and Astarian gets caught. Oopsie, time for a jailbreak. We slip him some lockpicks and wait out the heat from the fuzz. Head back to camp to talk to Gale and switch him out for Lysel. We talk to a tiefling to advance her quest line, but we don't plan on finishing it. <laughs> Ending the episode, we travel forth. Episode 9, we are setting off from the grove. We stumble upon a dying man and his two companions. The dying man says that we are a true soul like him. His companions elaborate by saying that the true souls are basically other people with tadpoles and they're working for the absolute. The absolute being the big bad guys. We gonna be rocking with these guys for a bit, but we got our own plans. The two guys say that an owl bear killed their friend. I tell them to get back in there and kill it. So we go into. One of the dudes tries to puss out, but I intimidate him into attacking it. The fight goes pretty well, which it better being a six to one fight. <laughs> The baby owl bear then comes out and I let it live and it starts eating its own mother, which is super metal. Exploring the cave, we find a magically sealed chest. Luckily, we find a prayer next to it and it opens. Just some small goodies, but the only other thing of note in the cave. Exiting the cave and following the river, we find another dead body, but along with a dog. Turns out his name is Scratch and he's a purebred good boy. We give him some pets and tell him to go to our camp. Do a bit more exploring and finding some more dead bodies, then we end the episode. We do a bit of backtracking at the beginning of episode 10. I find a cliff that I can jump onto, leading to a necklace that gives guidance and a hole full of spiders. I notice something among the spiders and I pull it out. A bit of gold and a spider egg that when thrown will spawn spiders. We head more south and run into Auntie Ethel being harassed by these two dudes who immediately turn around to fight us. We dispatch them easily and Auntie tells me that they were looking for their sister who's been hiding out with Auntie. She teleports away and we head further into the swamp. We get stopped and I have to roll for something, but the DC is 20 and I rolled an 8. <laughs> Anyway, we head further in and we find some sheep, but when I try to reach out and pet it, I have to pass a check. Succeeding the check, a white wall passes over the land and blinds me. With the illusion broken, I now see how shitty the place really is. Speaking of shitty, the sheep turned into this fucking thing. He tells me to fuck off, but I refuse and start the fight anyway. The two sages are easily taken care of, but the others really give me a hard time towards the end with just how tanky they are. After the fight, I decide to take a long rest. Back at camp, we are surprised by the loot girl from episode 6. She tells us she couldn't stand being in the grove anymore and was looking for a safe place to stay. I let her stay at the camp and go to bed. Then I wake up in the middle of the night, standing over her corpse. After admiring my work, I try to hide the body but fail miserably. After everyone wakes up and sees the body, I lie and say an animal did it. They easily believe my lie and I giggle to myself about getting away with it all. The last thing I do is I trade out Gale for Will in the party and I fail to play catch with the dog. I don't see why not. Well, that's not what I fucking wanted. Okay, reload for dog. Didn't happen. <laughs> We finally make it to Auntie Ethel's house and give the girl the bad news. Auntie didn't like that very much, so she teleported the girl away and reveals her true form. We immediately go into combat and she goes invisible. She then fucks off downstairs and we loot the place. We then head downstairs to find her personal torture chamber filled with poor souls suffering for eternity. We make our way through a door that's made of sentient tree and find some enemies to fight. Before I fight them, I go back to camp to take a long rest. I am again woken up in the middle of the night. I go for a stroll and run into my evil goblin butler. He gives me a super badass cape and tells me he'll be watching us. The cape lets us turn invisible after killing an enemy, which is so sick. After that interaction, we go back to the place of battle. Nothing of real note during the fight, as long as you don't count all the times that we went down and how everybody but Will got the shit kicked out of them. Nothing I couldn't handle though. 
After we lick our wounds, I end the episode. Episode 12 starts off with a bang. Someone doesn't like visitors. Okay. The pathfinding gets a little broken here, and I lose a lot of health in this stupid gauntlet. Just in time for the big boss fight. A boss fight that I cannot win. I snipe her with a starion and start the combat. Then she splits into four and either one shots one of my party members or casts hold person so they can't do anything. I try several times off screen, but ultimately I back off and go back to exploring. I need a couple more levels before I try again. I go back to the abandoned town and head through the gates. A goblin on the roof stops me and tries to intimidate me, but I intimidate her back. She backs off and I can freely explore. I loot everything that's not nailed down and head into the blacksmith shop to get me a new sword. Back at the village, I snipe this sleeping guy for some easy XP. Then I cockblock the shit out of this dude who's so desperate to get his dick sticky, he'd stick it in your mom. <laughs> but mommy gets mad, so we gotta kill her. After the fight, I go back to camp and call it a day. Astarian tries to get a midnight snack, but I tell him no homo and we go back to sleep. The next morning, he tells everyone that he's a vampire like it wasn't obvious. Outside of camp, we head to the big windmill. Again, another goblin stops us, but this time we tell him to fuck off and fight them. Astarian one-shots the little fucker and he gives up immediately. Spilling his guts about anything we ask him and even gives us a new two-handed axe for Will. We stop the windmill and cut down the gnome. He tells us he's looking for a friend of his and that he's going to the Underdark. Half of my party levels up and I call the episode there. I start episode 13 by going into the windmill for some goodies. Most notably, these lightning boots for Astarian. I also give him my cloak, that way he'll pretty much always have sneak attack. We go back into the village and check out a well that has something shiny at the bottom. We jump in and find a huge cave system underneath. Inside said cave is an ass ton of spiders. Spiders that are pretty annoying to fight, honestly. Between the webs and teleporting, I can only rely on ranged attacks this fight. A fight that drags on because of missed shots. Once the spiders are dealt with, I head deeper into the cave. And who would have guessed? More spiders. Big Mama Spider feels a Starion sneaking on her webs and rushes over to start combat. This boss, I guess, summons a ton of adds that I can luckily push off the edge using an arrow. In fact, I use quite a few arrows and throwables because I need all the help I can get in this fight. After scraping the bottom of the barrel, Xanros ended up hella dead. I didn't plan on doing another fight so soon, but it worked out. Going back to camp to heal, I talk to Astarian and have a bit of a boy talk. Then, Gale tells me that he needs to eat magical items and I tell him, no, bad Gale, you eat when I feed you. I have an eventless night and call it there. After resting up, we go back to the cave to loot it. Only two things of note were the Poisoner's Garb and the Dark Amethyst. The Dark Amethyst being the better thing, but we'll get to more of that in a second. We head back to the abandoned village and talk to a group of ogres. I convince them that if they fight for me, they can eat the victims. They were more than pleased with that deal and gave me a horn to summon them. Next, I go into the cellar of one of the buildings there. There's a ton of alchemy ingredients to steal, and I find a secret switch that opens up a bookcase. Behind it is a cave and a magic mirror. I intimidate the mirror into letting me pass, which reveals a huge room with a ton of cool stuff. Besides the sick-ass monster bones, there's a gate with a book behind it. I disarm a ton of traps and pick up the fucking Necronomicon, bro. I get an option to put the Dark Amethyst in its mouth, and I thrust it in so good you have no idea. Then I have to do several saving throws to obtain the demonic knowledge. But before I could finish, the book slams shut. It says it still has secrets to tell, but it'll happen later. And with that, I end the episode off and do some shopping in between. Episode 15, we head into the goblin camp. Get stopped at a checkpoint and lie to get past. Then everyone collectively gets a bad headache and we see the big baddies for the first time. Shadowheart uses her dodecahedron, or whatever that is, to push out the voice of the Absolute. 
Entering the Gobbo camp, the first thing that we see is that asshat, Volvo. We get him in trouble, so he gets sent back to his cage. Over on the right-hand side, we find a guy bragging about some bullshit. He tells me to kiss his feet, but I give him the old Uno reverse card and everyone approves. Climb up and talk to a goblin who happens to be reading Volo's book, and we intimidate him into giving it to us. I find a cracked wall and go to attack it. That apparently wakes everyone's ass up and we get into a huge fight. Luckily, it's only the people who were sleeping that got aggroed. After the fight and looting, we finally bust down the wall and head in. We find ourselves in the rafters, bypassing the people on the ground floor and earning us some sneaky chests. We do a little bit of scouting and find the head bitch in charge, Night Warden Minthara. She tells me to help her and I say I'll talk to the prisoner they caught but I end the episode before going any further. We were going to start the episode by going out and talking to the prisoner, but I have no idea where that is, and I went into the wrong door. Said door took me to the warg pens, where we find some goblin children throwing rocks at a caged bear. Of course I start chucking rocks too. To spoil the fun, the bear breaks out of its cage and fucking squares up. We beat up the bear and bam! turns into Halson. Now I knew this going in, but I didn't want him at the grove when we raid it later. This bastard gets low on health and turns back into a bear with a full health bar that extends the fight quite a bit, but he winds up dead anyway. After that fun time, we backtrack to find Volo in his cage. I intimidate the goblin to give him to me, and I send him on his way to our camp. At this point, I forget about the prisoner and head back to Minthara just to tell her where the grove is. She says we need to go in as friends and open the gate to let the goblins in. I head back to the grove and thought, why not steal the idol before the raid? I then try to take it after drinking a potion of invisibility. Unfortunately for me, it wears off as soon as I touch the thing. Then a cutscene plays where the druids turn on the tieflings. After the entire place gets fighting, I get my shit pushed in. So I reload and take a long rest instead. Back at camp, I feel a little woozy and Lizel tries to kill me for it. What a silly goose. The cutscene kind of abruptly ends with nothing happening, and but she does pack up her stuff. So I don't know if she's supposed to leave. Anyway, I see Volo and proceed to tell him about my tadpole problem. He says he can help us, but it'll take some time, so come back later. I go to sleep and see Goth Bay in my dreams. She gives us an exposition dump that gives us more questions than answers. When we wake up, Scratch wants to play fetch, and whatever he wants, he gets. Apparently that single night's sleep was enough time for Volo to have found a cure. And man, do I put my life in this guy's hands. Dude uses an ice pick to prod around behind my eye. Short of lobotomizing me, he rips out my eye. He then gives us a new eye that he just had in his pocket. But that new eye is badass as hell, giving us the ability to see invisible permanently. And with that little treat, I end the episode. We do a bit of backtracking because there was one guy I forgot to talk to at the goblin camp. We meet up with this cute, not at all creepy dude who just love, love, loves pain. I let him whip me a couple times and he gives me another permanent buff. A buff that gives me plus two to attack rolls and wisdom saving throws when below 30% HP. Now it's time to go back to the grove where they finally made preparations to be raided. They've put oil barrels in front of the gate. Now, I thought that destroying the barrels would start the fight, but it totally doesn't. So I basically took out all their defenses for free. I sound the horn and the goblins come running. I open the gate, Will calls me a traitor, and the fight begins. I clearly didn't think this through because Will was one of my strongest people, so he is now priority number one. After taking him down, the head tiefling was next. But he wasn't as bad as Will, and everything else just kind of takes care of itself. After looting everything and doing some more combat that wasn't really noteworthy, I head back to camp. Lizelle I confirm to be glitched because she's still here, but she won't join my party. So Gale's up to bat. He's looking a little hangry, so we feed him some shoes or something, and he's good as new. After leveling him up, we head straight back into combat. One small slaughter of tieflings later, and that's the episode. Starting off episode 18 with Gale being a hungry little hippo. We feed him a locket from a dead guy, but he doesn't seem to mind where we get the items. Anyway, back to the fight. 
we finally start facing druids. This fight is a lot more drawn out and harder than I was expecting, mainly for the fact that Koga is so hard to hit despite her low AC. After getting her out of the way, the fight is easily finished. Before I start sifting through the dead bodies, I need a big ol' nap. Before that nap, Ye yeah wants to talk. He teaches me some magic and things get gay. Until they aren't. We take a big sleep 10 feet apart because we're not gay. Then I get to turn into a little raccoon and dig through all the garbage. Only thing of note were these runes that I had to put into a statue that opened up a secret treasure room. And the only thing in there was Sorrow, a glaive that seems pretty cool, but I don't have anyone that can use it. We return to Minthara and she is just gushing, bro. She comes onto me so hard and I don't know how to talk to women, so I just leave. It immediately takes us back to camp where the goblins are already making a mess of the place. Before bed, I talk to Astarian, but decline his advances because the scary lady called Dibs and I don't know what to do. What do I do? Please help me. Speaking of the scary lady, I lay down to rest and there she is. And man, is she thirsting for a bursting, bro. She is moaning for a boning, dog. She is totally somebody's daughter and shouldn't be objectified and needs to be respected. So anyway, bitch was sucking my leaf, right? I have nudity turned off for obvious reasons, but honestly, I think it's funnier this way. I am, however, putting extra censorship on the video so that it isn't flagged for anything. If you want to see the raw, uncut, or circumcised footage, just go watch the episode, it's still up. After all that, we have a little chat with her and she seems to be having doubts about the Absolute, which hopefully we can exploit later. We leave her there and go to actual sleep this time. Then, while I'm asleep, she tries to kill me! We wake up just in time and she says the Absolute spared me and that we are to meet up again at Moonrise Towers. And after that, I finally get some fucking sleep. The next morning, I outro the video. I wanted to use episode 19 for just talking to my party members. We start with Lizelle, but she really has nothing to say about current events, which I kind of see as evidence to her being bugged out and not supposed to be here. Next up is Gale, who continues to jump around the subject of his magical condition. I tell him about my dark thoughts of needing to kill, and he's like, it's all good, bro, we all get like that, don't even worry. Don't act on them, though. I can't tell him that I act on them all the fucking time. Moving on to Shadowheart. First thing that comes out of her mouth is about Gale's condition. Guess she's just as curious as I am. We then get onto the subject of her condition with her hand. She says it's a gift from her god, and that's about it. We also talk about the artifact that's keeping us human, and she knows just as little as I do. Then she drones on and on about her god while I humor her, sprinkling in some of her backstory along the way. We become closer from the talk, and now we're close enough for her to have some alone time with us on a quiet night. Last but not least, Astarian. I ask him about his backstory and how he became a vampire. He tells me some surface level stuff and talks about how the tadpole is really helping him out. He's really happy about our situation and truly it is a breath of fresh air talking to him. With his dialogue options depleted, there's one more we have to talk to. Who's a good boy? You are, you're a good boy. As soon as I travel out of camp, Astarian has some more to say. He really, really, really wants to consume the other tadpoles. And as far as I'm concerned, he can have every single one. After that, we finish looting the grove in full and in the episode. Right at the start of the episode, Gale is hungry again. I tell him no, and he straight up leaves the party. <laughs> I reload because I don't have any other party members, and this fight would be a hell of a lot harder if I was down a man. He then finally tells us about his condition. TLDR, he slept with a god, got greedy, and now he's a walking nuke. We tell him it's all good, and we continue on. On to Auntie Ethel once more. She still hits like a truck, but now I can actually survive. Gale's magic missiles come in so clutch here because they never miss, and they're the best way of getting rid of her clones. That sounded like I said clothes. <laughs> getting rid of her clothes. Oh yeah, Auntie Ethel, good shit. Anyway, I kick her ass so hard that she stops the fight to beg for her life. She will give us plus one to any ability score to spare her. I tell her to give me that and the girl. She's pissed off about it, but I let her go. The girl seems not to be pleased about being saved, though. We scold her for no reason, but she leaves us to our loot. 
After looting everything, we find a portal back to the swamp where the girl is crying over the coffin of her dead husband. Leaving her there, I make plans for the next episode and call it a day. Now, I am an absolute dingus because I go exploring the rest of the swamp having not rested from the Auntie Ethel fight. And what do I run into? Some fucking mud monsters. This fight was rough. Not only because of my lack of preparation, but also because of one tiny mistake. I guess I'll take on these two. Shit, yeah. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, I didn't know they exploded on death. After rezzing everyone, I now have to deal with the annoying regenerating tree people. Tree people that also kicked my ass. But when all is said and done, I emerge victorious. I immediately go back to camp to take a long rest, just for my sleep to be interrupted by Goth Bay. She talks shit to me about not using my tadpole to my advantage, and I just ignore her on the topic. She says some vague shit and dips before I could get any real answers. Away from camp, Shadowheart needs to tell all of us her dream of being a dark justicier for some reason. It didn't give me any meaningful dialogue, so I just moved on to the looting. We find some sparky gloves for Astarian and make some plans for the next episode. Finishing up the swamp, I basically am just exploring the fog of war and talking to people this episode. First thing I find is this froggy who fucking hated Auntie Ethel's guts. And now that she's gone, the froggy wants to reward us with a shiny. It's worthless, but I don't know what I was expecting from a frog. Moving along, we meet a man in the swamp named Gandrel. Turns out he's a monster hunter who's hunting Astarian. So I let Astarian decide what to do with him. And he chooses violence. Not a particularly hard fight, but quite annoying. He targets Astarian exclusively and even brings him down, but with our powers combined, I magic missile his ass into the ground. He drops this sick crossbow that I immediately equipped and we move on. Cut to me dying to some traps. I accidentally click on Astarian and he wants to talk all about his vampire master. Giving some more backstory and just generally being paranoid. Head back to camp and he wants to talk some more. This time things get a little flirty but I turn him down again because tonight Shadowheart is giving me a visit. We meet by a waterfall to drink some wine and talk a bit. After the nice chat, we seal it with a kiss to end the night. I wake up the next day and she wants to talk again. Then we leave camp and she wants to talk again, dude. This bitch is getting so needy. But this time she shows us a cutscene of her as a child being saved from a wolf by some Shar worshippers. I tell her, cool story bro, and we end the episode. We finally cross the bridge in episode 23 and get to see who's having a party over here. Hyenas. Hyenas and gnolls. Which are just big hyenas. So yeah, 90% of this episode was combat after combat. We start with these four gnolls on a hill. Then we work our way down the hill towards the bloated hyenas. The bloated ones turn into gnolls, so things got a tad more difficult. There was a ton of stuff to loot after this one. And we also get a ton of hyena ears in order to make speed potions, so I'm a happy camper. Deeper in, we find another group of gnolls led by a special one named Flind. There's also two humans in a cave behind them, but they refuse to help. Astarian really carries this fight, putting out some absolutely massive numbers, even though Xanros goes down. After the fight, one of the guys in the cave gives me, as thanks, a password for his associates should we ever meet them. After that conversation, I loot all the hyena ears I could carry along with a special mace and another tadpole. Then we head to camp for a nap. Back at camp, Shadowheart and Lizel are having a bit of beef. I of course do nothing to interfere and want to watch the cat fight play out. Little did I know that Shadowheart doesn't play around and slits her throat in her sleep. I'm not mad about it because we get a free long rest out of it. Truly a bloodbath of an episode. First things first, I loot the cave of all the stuff those guys left behind. Wasn't a whole heck of a lot, but they did seem to leave some traps. One in particular that nearly wipes my party. Disarm. Big ol' tripwire. Cool. Traps. Whoop. How considerate. Okay, Shadowheart. You're playing a little dangerous there. Fuck. 
Well, shit. Well, shit. The boulder blocks the path for my other party members like it's some kind of gate. A boulder gate three, perhaps. So I decide to go back to the goblin camp since I was told that there would be a trader still there to sell stuff to. After a bit of shopping and selling, I head west to Joachim's Rest, a place that the goblins raided before the grove. Set on fire, I run into some knights who are having trouble with a door. I help them out and they say there's a duke that needs rescuing. We do indeed rescue the duke, but she asks us to help her find another duke that the goblins took. I agree, and we get a new bow for Astarian. Then we loot the place to the best of my ability and start heading west again. We walk into a room where this guy is about to blast us with a fireball, but I give him the password and he lets us through. We meet the big boss and she gives us some gold for saving her people, and now we have access to their trader. One of their guys says he has a pet artist, and I convince him to give it to me. The artist says we'll get paid for saving him once we're in the city and he takes off. We do a little more shopping and we are finally caught up. It's been a hell of a journey so far and I just love being an absolute menace to society. This is definitely just the tip of the iceberg though. The adventures of Xanros will continue shortly. Making this video has got me itching for more, and if you feel the same way, you could check out my playlist of every video talked about in this video and any new videos going forward. If you watched to this point, thank you for watching, thank me for playing, and I'll see you in the next one.